One might fantasize how cool it would be to get the strength of an ape and the brain of a man. But you'd also have the possibility of having the brain of an ape and the fumbling clumsiness of a man. Ever wondered about the wild frontiers of science during Stalin's reign? Picture this, an audacious scientist, Dr. Ivanov, embarks on a surreal quest to create human-ape hybrids. A story so strange it seems fictional, yet it's a forgotten fragment of our own scientific history. Buckle up for a journey into one of the 20th century's most bizarre scientific ventures. The genesis of a bizarre idea. Joseph Stalin has taken a paranoid dislike to all scientists. Historical context and initial thoughts. In the early 20th century, the world of science was like a cauldron of boiling ideas, with new discoveries and theories challenging the very fabric of known reality. It was an era marked by an insatiable quest for knowledge, often treading the fine line between genius and madness. Amidst this backdrop, the concept of human-ape hybrids emerged, not as a figment of science fiction, but as a serious scientific inquiry. This was the era that saw the rise of Dr. Ilya Ivanovich Ivanov, a name that would become synonymous with one of the most audacious and controversial experiments in scientific history. Dr. Ivanov, a Russian biologist, was not just any scientist. His reputation was built on the solid grounds of his pioneering work in the field of artificial insemination. By the early 1900s, Ivanov had already made significant strides in this area, notably in the breeding of farm animals. His success garnered international acclaim, establishing him as a leading figure in the scientific community. But beneath his work with livestock, there brewed a more radical idea, one that would soon catapult him into the annals of scientific infamy. The concept of crossing humans with apes was not entirely novel at the time. Popular culture and mythology were replete with creatures that were amalgamations of humans and animals. Think of centaurs, mermaids, and the like. These beings captured the public imagination and reflected a deep-seated curiosity about the boundaries between species. However, what set Ivanov apart was his desire to turn these mythical concepts into scientific reality. He speculated about the possibility of creating a human-ape hybrid, a thought that was as intriguing as it was disturbing. The scientific community of the early 20th century was a far cry from what we know today. The ethical boundaries were hazy, and the thirst for groundbreaking discoveries often overrode the moral considerations we now deem essential. In this climate, Ivanov's thoughts on hybridization found a certain resonance. It was an era heavily influenced by Darwin's theory of evolution, and the idea of breeding humans with their closest relatives, the apes, seemed like a natural extension of evolutionary studies. It presented an opportunity to explore the limits of science and to delve deeper into the mysteries of human ancestry and evolution. Ivanov's idea was also buoyed by the political climate in Russia. The Bolshevik Revolution of 1917 had ushered in a new regime that viewed science as a tool to reshape society. The new Soviet Union, under the leadership of Lenin and later Stalin, was eager to break free from the religious and philosophical constraints of the past. They saw science as a means to assert their ideological stance and demonstrate the supremacy of the communist regime. Ivanov's work, with its potential to challenge the existing paradigms of biology and ethics, found a strange ally in the Soviet authorities. As the 1920s progressed, Ivanov's focus shifted more and more towards his hybridization project. He began to actively seek support and resources for his experiments, Surprisingly, or perhaps not so much given the tenor of the times, he found a willing audience in both the Soviet government and various scientific communities abroad. His proposal to inseminate female chimpanzees with human sperm and vice versa was met with a mix of intrigue and horror, but importantly, it was taken seriously. It was a testament to the era's scientific and ideological zeitgeist that such an idea was not immediately dismissed as the ramblings of a madman but was considered a legitimate scientific endeavor. Ivanov's rise can thus be seen as a convergence of several factors. His own scientific prowess, 
a global scientific community that was pushing the boundaries of what was considered acceptable, and a political regime that saw science as a means to an end. The stage was set for one of the most bizarre experiments in the history of science. As Ivanov prepared to embark on his quest to create a human. Ape hybrid, the world watched with a mix of apprehension and fascination. It was a project that promised to unlock new scientific frontiers, but at the same time, it treaded into uncharted ethical territories. This period was a crucible of scientific endeavor, where the fervor to innovate often outpaced the development of ethical guidelines. Ivanov's work, therefore, did not exist in isolation. It was a product of its time, an era that celebrated scientific exploration in its most unbridled form. The quest to blend human and ape was not just a solitary scientist's dream, but a reflection of a broader societal and scientific disposition towards the untamed pursuit of knowledge. As we delve deeper into Ivanov's journey and his experiments, it becomes evident that his story is more than just a tale of scientific ambition. It is a window into an era where the lines between the possible and the prohibited were constantly being redrawn. Ivanov's saga, fraught with moral quandaries and scientific audacities, sets the stage for a narrative that challenges our understanding of ethics in scientific inquiry. His journey from a respected biologist to a figure of scientific controversy encapsulates the complexities of scientific exploration in an era that was grappling with the implications of its own advancements. Dr. Ivanov's ascendancy and the Soviet Union's interest. As Dr. Ilya Ivanovich Ivanov's ideas about human-ape hybridization began to take shape, his ascension paralleled a critical juncture in Soviet history. The early 20th century, particularly in the Soviet Union, was a period characterized by a fervent desire to redefine society through science and technology. Ivanov's burgeoning reputation and his groundbreaking research fell in line with the Soviet Union's broader ambitions, capturing the interest of not just the scientific community within Russia, but also the political echelons that wielded the power to make or break such revolutionary endeavors. Ivanov, by the 1920s, had established himself as a pioneer in the field of artificial insemination, particularly with horses. His success in this area not only enhanced his stature as a scientist, but also demonstrated his willingness to push the boundaries of conventional science. This was exactly the kind of scientific audacity that resonated with the Soviet regime, which was actively seeking ways to demonstrate its ideological superiority over the West. The Bolsheviks, having seized power in 1917, were keen to propagate their view of a scientifically advanced and ideologically superior socialist state. In Ivanov, they found an unlikely champion. The alignment of Ivanov's interests with those of the Soviet regime was not merely coincidental. The Bolsheviks, led by Lenin and later by Stalin, were committed to eradicating the remnants of the old Tsarist regime. Товарищи! Рабочая крестьянская революция, о необходимости которой все время говорили большевики. And science was seen as a key tool in this process. They believed that demonstrating superiority in science and technology was essential to validating the communist ideology. Ivanov's work, with its potential to challenge existing biological norms and push the frontiers of science, was viewed as a means to this end. Furthermore, Ivanov's research was in tune with the prevailing scientific and philosophical ethos of the time. Darwin's theory of evolution was gaining ground, and the possibility of bridging the gap between humans and apes offered a tantalizing opportunity to explore these evolutionary theories in a tangible way. The idea of hybridization was not just a scientific curiosity, but was also laced with ideological implications. It suggested a continuum in the natural world that resonated with Marxist beliefs about the unity and malleability of nature. The Soviet Union's interest in Ivanov's work was also motivated by its desire to showcase its scientific prowess on the international stage. In an era where Cold War tensions were beginning to simmer, scientific achievements were as much a display of national strength as they were of intellectual progress. Ivanov's work offered the Soviet Union a chance to make a statement to the world, that it was not only competing in the realm of science, but was leading the way in bold, uncharted territories. 
This intersection of scientific ambition and political ideology provided Ivanov with an unprecedented opportunity. He received substantial support from the Soviet government, including funding and access to state-of-the-art facilities. This backing was instrumental in propelling his research forward. It enabled him to undertake a series of experiments that would have been unimaginable in a different political and scientific climate. Yet Ivanov's ascent was not without its challenges. The scientific community, both within and outside the Soviet Union, was divided over the ethical and practical implications of his work. While some viewed it as a groundbreaking exploration of genetic and evolutionary science, others raised concerns about the moral and ethical dimensions of breeding between humans and apes. These debates mirrored the broader discussions occurring in the scientific community at the time, reflecting a struggle to balance the pursuit of knowledge with the emerging understanding of ethical science. Despite these challenges, Ivanov's work progressed aided in no small part by the unique confluence of scientific curiosity and political will. His journey from a respected artificial insemination specialist to a controversial figure at the forefront of human-ape hybridization research is a testament to the complex interplay between science and politics. The Soviet Union's support for his work was emblematic of a broader trend in the early 20th century, where scientific research was often intertwined with national interests and ideological battles. As Ivanov's experiments began to take shape, they garnered increasing attention both domestically and internationally. His endeavors were reported in newspapers and scientific journals, sparking debates and discussions in academic and public circles alike. The very notion of human-ape hybrids challenged existing perceptions of human uniqueness and the natural order, raising profound questions about the nature of humanity itself. It was a topic that transcended scientific boundaries, touching on philosophical, ethical, and even theological concerns. Ivanov's research thus became a focal point for a broader discourse on the role and responsibilities of science in society. It raised questions about the limits of scientific inquiry, and the ethical boundaries that scientists should navigate. These questions were particularly pertinent in the Soviet Union, where science was seen as a key tool for societal transformation. The regime's support for Ivanov's work was indicative of its belief in the power of science to reshape not just the natural world, but also societal norms and beliefs. In this context, Ivanov's ascension can be seen as a product of both his scientific acumen and his ability to align his research with the broader ambitions of the Soviet Union. His work on human-ape hybridization, while controversial, was a reflection of a period marked by a heady mix of scientific optimism and ideological fervor. It was a time when the boundaries of science were being pushed in new and often unanticipated directions, driven by a belief in the transformative power of scientific discovery. The experiments begin the Guinean Trials The journey of Dr. Ilya Ivanovich Ivanov in pursuit of creating a human-ape hybrid reached a critical juncture with the commencement of his experiments in Guinea. This chapter of his story unfolds in the late 1920s, a period that saw Ivanov leaving the confines of his laboratory in Russia and venturing into the depths of Guinea, a region which presented both an ideal setting for his research and a multitude of unforeseen challenges. Backed by the Soviet Union's financial and ideological support, Ivanov set out for the French colony of Guinea. His destination was the Institut Pasteur's research facility in Kindia. The facility, known for its work with tropical diseases, also housed a variety of primates, making it an ideal location for Ivanov's groundbreaking experiments. The Soviet government's endorsement not only provided him with the necessary resources, but also lent a veneer of legitimacy to his controversial project. Upon arriving in Guinea, Ivanov faced the daunting task of implementing his ambitious, and to many, outlandish experiment. His goal was to inseminate female chimpanzees with human sperm, a task that no one had attempted before, and one that presented a plethora of scientific and ethical challenges. Ivanov, however, was undeterred. He believed that the success of his experiment could redefine our understanding of human evolution and biology. The initial phase of Ivanov's experiments focused on finding suitable chimpanzee subjects. This task was arduous, as it involved not only identifying mature and healthy females, but also ensuring their well-being in captivity, 
a condition crucial for the success of the insemination process. The challenges were compounded by the limited understanding at the time of primate biology and behavior, particularly in captive environments. Despite these hurdles, Ivanov persevered, driven by his conviction and the potential implications of his research. The process of artificial insemination itself was fraught with difficulties. Ivanov had to develop new techniques and methodologies as nothing in his previous work with farm animals could have prepared him for the peculiarities of working with chimpanzees. The procedure required precision and care, and the lack of prior experience in this field meant that each attempt was a venture into the unknown. Moreover, Ivanov had to conduct his experiments under the watchful eyes of the local staff and the broader scientific community at the Institute. He was acutely aware of the controversial nature of his work and the potential backlash it could generate. To mitigate this, he often cloaked his experiments in secrecy, adding an element of intrigue and, at times, suspicion among his peers and subordinates. Despite these challenges, Ivanov managed to inseminate several chimpanzees over the course of his time in Guinea. However, the results were not as he had hoped. None of the inseminated chimpanzees became pregnant, a disappointing outcome that raised questions about the feasibility of his project. The failure of these initial attempts was a significant setback for Ivanov, but it did not deter him. He began to explore other avenues, including the possibility of reversing the process by inseminating human females with chimpanzee sperm. This new direction in Ivanov's experiments marked a further escalation in the ethical stakes of his research. The idea of inseminating human females with chimpanzee sperm was even more controversial than his initial experiments and sparked a heated debate within the scientific community and beyond. The prospect of creating a human-ape hybrid, already a contentious issue, was now fraught with even more profound ethical implications. As Ivanov grappled with these challenges, he also had to contend with the logistical and practical difficulties of his work in Guinea. The remote location, the limited infrastructure, and the challenges of working in a tropical environment all posed significant hurdles. Moreover, the political landscape was changing back in the Soviet Union, and the support he had once enjoyed was becoming increasingly uncertain. Despite the odds stacked against him, Ivanov's determination did not wane. He continued his work, driven by a blend of scientific curiosity and a deep-seated belief in the potential of his research. His persistence was emblematic of a broader trend in the scientific community at the time, where the pursuit of knowledge often overshadowed the consideration of ethical boundaries. The Guinean trials, however, were not just a test of Ivanov's scientific acumen. They were also a reflection of the complexities of conducting cutting-edge research in a colonial setting. Ivanov had to navigate not only the scientific challenges, but also the cultural and political nuances of working in a French colony. This added an additional layer of complexity to his experiments, as he had to balance the scientific objectives with the local sensibilities and the colonial administration's expectations. Throughout his time in Guinea, Ivanov remained in close contact with his supporters and peers in the Soviet Union and Europe, regularly updating them on his progress and the challenges he faced. These communications were not just logistical updates, but were also part of a broader effort to maintain support for his work. Ivanov was acutely aware that the success of his experiments depended not only on his scientific prowess, but also on the continued backing of his patrons. Despite the numerous challenges and setbacks, Ivanov's experiments in Guinea marked a significant chapter in the history of scientific inquiry. They were emblematic of an era where the boundaries of science were being pushed in new directions, often without a full understanding of the ethical and moral implications. Ivanov's work in Guinea was not just a series of scientific experiments. It was a manifestation of a larger struggle to define the limits of scientific exploration and the role of ethics in guiding this journey. Ethical Dilemmas and International Reactions The scientific endeavors of Dr. Ilya Ivanovich Ivanov, particularly his attempts to create a human-ape hybrid, sparked a maelstrom of ethical debates and diverse reactions from the international community. This chapter delves into the profound ethical implications of Ivanov's work and the varied responses it elicited from the global scientific community and the public. 
Ivanov's experiments carried out in the remote jungles of Guinea were not just a scientific curiosity, but a venture into an ethical minefield. The very notion of blending human and ape genetics challenged the established moral and philosophical boundaries. It raised fundamental questions about the nature of humanity, the sanctity of human life, and the ethical limits of scientific inquiry. The idea of creating a being that blurred the line between human and animal struck at the core of deeply held beliefs about human uniqueness and dignity. The ethical implications of Ivanov's work were far-reaching. The potential creation of a human-ape hybrid raised concerns about the rights and status of such a being. Would it be considered human or animal? What kind of legal and moral protections would it be afforded? These questions were not just hypothetical musings, but pointed to real and pressing ethical dilemmas that challenged existing legal and moral frameworks. Moreover, the methods employed by Ivanov in his experiments were subject to ethical scrutiny. The use of chimpanzees, sentient beings with complex social structures and emotional capacities, in invasive and untested procedures, raised serious concerns about animal welfare and rights. The possibility of inseminating human females with chimpanzee sperm was even more contentious, raising issues of consent, human dignity, and the potential exploitation of vulnerable individuals for scientific ends. The reactions to Ivanov's experiments were as varied as they were passionate. Within the scientific community, there was a spectrum of responses, ranging from cautious intrigue to outright condemnation. Some scientists were intrigued by the possibilities that Ivanov's work opened up, seeing it as a bold exploration of uncharted scientific territory. They viewed it as an extension of the ongoing efforts to understand human evolution and genetics. Others, however, were deeply troubled by the ethical implications and the potential consequences of crossing species boundaries. They argued that the pursuit of knowledge should not come at the expense of ethical considerations and the inherent dignity of human and non-human life. The public reaction to Ivanov's experiments was equally divided. On one hand, there was a sense of fascination with the audacity of Ivanov's project and the mysteries it sought to unravel. This was a time when the world was rapidly changing and the boundaries of science and technology seemed limitless. For many, Ivanov's experiments symbolized the promise and power of scientific progress. On the other hand, there was a strong current of revulsion and moral outrage. The idea of creating a human-ape hybrid was seen by many as a violation of natural and divine laws. Religious groups in particular were vehement in their opposition, viewing Ivanov's work as a blasphemous attempt to play God. This sentiment was echoed by segments of the general public who saw the experiments as a dangerous and unethical tampering with the fundamental order of life. The international reaction to Ivanov's experiments also reflected broader geopolitical and ideological tensions of the time. In the West, Ivanov's work was often portrayed as a manifestation of the Soviet Union's disregard for ethical norms in its pursuit of scientific and ideological supremacy. It fed into the Cold War narrative of a morally bankrupt communist regime that was willing to transgress any boundary in the name of progress. In the Soviet Union, however, the reaction was more nuanced. While the government initially supported Ivanov's work, viewing it as a means to demonstrate the Soviet Union's scientific prowess, there was also unease about the potential political and ideological ramifications. As the ethical controversies surrounding the experiments grew, the Soviet authorities became increasingly wary of the international backlash and the potential for it to tarnish the image of Soviet science. The downfall of Ivanov and the legacy of his work. The saga of Dr. Ilya Ivanovich Ivanov, marked by ambition and controversy, eventually led to his dramatic downfall, leaving behind a complex legacy that influenced future scientific inquiries and ethical debates. This chapter explores the culmination of Ivanov's career, the political and scientific repercussions of his work, and the enduring impact it had on the scientific community. Ivanov's downfall was as swift as it was unexpected. By the late 1920s, his experiments had not yielded the groundbreaking results he had hoped for. The failure to produce a human-ape hybrid, combined with the growing ethical concerns and international outcry, led to a decline in support from the Soviet government. 
Ivanov found himself increasingly isolated within the scientific community, both in the Soviet Union and abroad. His once promising career was now in jeopardy, overshadowed by controversy and disappointment. The final blow came in 1930, when Ivanov was arrested and exiled to Kazakhstan. This drastic action was part of a broader political purge by Stalin's regime, targeting intellectuals and scientists who were seen as potential threats to the ideological and political stability of the Soviet state. Ivanov, once a celebrated scientist, now found himself a victim of the very regime that had initially supported his work. He spent the last years of his life in exile, a tragic end to a career that had once held so much promise. The political and scientific repercussions of Ivanov's experiments were significant. In the Soviet Union, his downfall was a cautionary tale about the dangers of pushing scientific boundaries without regard for ethical considerations. It served as a reminder of the fragile nature of state support and the perils of intertwining science with political ideology. Internationally, Ivanov's work and subsequent downfall fueled the ongoing debates about the ethical limits of scientific research. His experiments became a reference point in discussions about the responsibilities of scientists and the need for ethical oversight in scientific endeavors. The legacy of Ivanov's work extended beyond his personal downfall. It sparked a broader conversation about the role of ethics in science, particularly in the field of genetics and reproductive technology. Ivanov's attempts to create a human-ape hybrid raised profound questions about the manipulation of life, the definition of humanity, and the moral implications of crossing species boundaries. These debates laid the groundwork for the development of modern bioethics, a field that seeks to address the ethical challenges posed by advances in biology and medicine. Moreover, Ivanov's experiments had a lasting impact on the scientific community's approach to controversial research, they highlighted the need for a balance between scientific curiosity and ethical responsibility. The international reaction to his work underscored the importance of public engagement and transparency in scientific research, particularly when it involves sensitive or potentially controversial subjects. In the years following Ivanov's downfall, the field of genetics continued to advance, but with a greater awareness of the ethical implications. The legacy of Ivanov's work can be seen in the development of guidelines and regulations governing genetic research, the treatment of animals in scientific experiments, and the consideration of moral and ethical issues in scientific decision-making.